Hello, I'm Chris. Today I'm doing a drive shaft video. Cars of 70 Chevelle. Should be the same for 68 to 72. Now, um, the drive shaft is 57 inches. Just under 57 inches from end to end. Or 55.5 from center of view joint to center of view joint. But just kind of look for these outside clips. Notice the outside clip groove for the clip this is another style GM I don't know if it's older or newer but it has these I guess they uh, that's the whole little holes and they ran some kind of I don't know what the hell that is plastic or some kind of liquid that hardened and sealed that in there so you have to burn that out with the propane torch you don't need an oxy acetylene torch just need a small torch to heat them up and then uh, I have a video showing you how to get this type of U-joint because there's no obvious way to get it out when you start looking at them. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you the way I get these out. Turbo 350, uh, Muncie, this is a very common freaking uh, spline, I think it's 27 spline, but I put an older T10 in mine. So I have to buy a freaking oddball bastard for a hundred dollars with a 16 spline and I put like an old, it's all I had, I had an old 65 Corvette T10 aluminum one. Alright so I'm going to show you how to get these off. All right, it's always a good idea to clean these off before you just go straight to sandblasting because you need to inspect all this and make sure uh, it's not cracked or something like that. It can happen. All right, so we got it all degreased and cleaned up in front of a good light. Just want to really look at that on both ends and make sure that, you know, just check it out because people will cut these and weld them. People will get torches on them, doing all kinds of stupid shit to them. So always inspect this before you restore it, okay? Sounds like a bunch of shit, but you'd be surprised sometimes what you find under these old cars like this. Okay. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and sandblast it, prime it, and paint it. I don't know what color yet. Alright, so got the drive shaft and the yoke painted. I just use, use that right there. It's cheap, it's at Home Depot and Lowe's. It's oil based though. 
and it takes a long time to dry, but it gives it this nice color um, for a cheap price. Okay, so the dry shaft's painted, yoked painted. Uh, we didn't mess these off, so we're gonna have to clean these up real good. like a little scotch bright. Oh my god. Oh ball from my uh Dremel kit. Alright we're just getting emery cloth. Fine emery cloth, some kind of lubricant. We're gonna try to polish these as smooth as we can get them. joints make sure that they have the grease fittings and the clips well I'm not saying like the grease fittings are better opposed to non greasable I'm just saying that if, if they have the grease fittings to make sure because a lot of people buy these and return them and don't put this stuff back in there for some reason oh that's heavy duty now these really are a little bit thicker than the factory ones but I don't know Always make sure that they're greased. Okay, so I'm gonna get a C-clamp and see if I can do this with a C-clamp. All right, and be aware of the position of this. You, you wanna put this where you can access it, okay? So, this way. Yeah, and you're gonna scratch it up. Millions of people Center are everywhere. new with Xfinity. One eight hundred Xfinity or click today. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Now you're looking in there for that groove for the snap ring. See how we just pressed it in just to access that little groove. It's always good to find some tools that work with what you have. See these fit. Perfect. You don't have to buy special pliers. Check that that's in there. Good, like the way it's supposed to be. All right, we're just going down to the same thing like the other side. We're just pressing it down just to see that groove to put the snap ring in. sure they're in there. If you scratch your paint off seriously. Well 
What else are you gonna do? Repaint it? Doing this seems pointless, but whenever you look under your car, you don't notice those. In other words, it's not gonna remind you that you knocked the paint off your freshly painted yoke, so. <laughs> All right, always check this, make sure it's not loose. It can be loose. All right, it's real tight. All right, you just need to put a little bit until it starts pushing it out. Just top it off. Okay, that's good. So this side doesn't want to go in like this. So we have to get them started first. And you can just tap these in. I just didn't want to make a caveman video. All right, we got one kind of started. Kind of get it in the middle. Things can go. Things can get dumb where you have to put them in there like this, and then you got to be very careful. You don't want to just press that in because uh, if that's not aligned perfect, see. So what we did was we kind of worked it where. See that new U-joint is in there. Go ahead and grease it. All right. Hope you can see it squared down. So anyway, that's how you get that U-joint in there. Greased, ready to go. This is ready to put in the car. Thanks for watching.